Uh, today, uh, our session is about coaching. Uh, the title of it is what is coaching or um, my preferred title is the power of coaching in ministry. So uh, let's say, I mean, let's, let's uh, open with a prayer as we open. Uh, I like to, I like everyone to kind of look at each other and then smile. <laughs> everyone looks so serious. Um, so let's, you know, where you are, let's, I like, uh, you know, breath prayer. So uh, please relax and uh, let your back of your body touch the chair if you can if you can and then let your arms drop like this and uh, i don't know how your day has been so far but then let's relax and then take a deep breath in Thank God's peace and then deep breath out. Invite God's presence into your body and spirit. Just for a few more seconds. Most gracious God, may this time be a time of learning for the purpose of enhancing God's mission and ministry. We invite your presence into our conversation today. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, you know, I'd like to invite uh, each one of you to introduce yourself um, by saying your name, your first name, give your name preceded by a positive adjective, which begins with the same letter as your first name. For instance, uh, you know, my name is Young Suk, so it starts with Y then I will say, I am youthful, Young Suk. Um, and I am a, a life coach and leadership coach, uh, working with uh, various leaders across the connection and across the denominations right now. And then I am, uh, right now I'm in New York. So I just modeled it. So say your name, your first name preceded by uh, the adjective. Um, this starts with the same letter as your first name. And then where you serve, uh, just the name of the church and location, okay? Uh, we will do this by mutual invitation. So I like to invite uh, let's see. Hey, Ran Yu, please. Yeah. Oops. Yes. <laughs> I thought you hit the wrong button. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I am uh, also for Heran. Um, and I'm serving, currently I'm serving uh, First United Methodist Church of Wellington in Wellington, Ohio, East Ohio Conference, yes. Thank you. Can you invite someone? Yes, I would like to invite uh, Heston Lee Moksanim. Um, yes, I, well, the word starting with uh, letter H. Um, Today I'm feeling horative, um, and uh, I currently serve uh, 
Centerville, Riceville, uh, and Parade Street, United Methodist Churches. So I, I serve a three-point charge, and I'm currently at the Western Pennsylvania Annual Conference. Uh, I'd like uh, to invite Reverend Sebel Lee to share next. Hi, um, well, I'm Sebel, and I'm serving um, churches in New York Annual Conference. So, yeah. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Can you invite someone? Oh, yeah. Can I invite um, Yojin Moksanim? Hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm Joyful Jin. Um, I'm currently serving at Hopewell United Methodist Church in in the North Georgia Conference. Uh, I'd like to invite Te Moksanim. Thank you. My name is Tay, and I am terrific. And I am currently serving at Surfside United Methodist Church in Myrtle Beach. Uh, I'm in the South Carolina Conference. And I am going to invite, let me see. Thank you, Mokan Nim. Uh, my name's Sanki Chang. I'm sensitive. Uh, I'm serving uh, uh, at uh, Central Methodist Church in Virginia Conference. Um, and I had just had a new appointment this year. Okay, I want to invite uh, I want to invite this I, because I used myself. Uh, I want to meet Song Yeok Kim Moksanim. Hello, everyone. My name is Song Hyuk Kim. Um, I am spiritual because I'm Song Hyuk S. Uh, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am currently serving in the Greater New Jersey Annual Conference. Uh, I recently received my new appointment starting July as an associate pastor at Trinity Monica Hill, New Jersey. Yes. Uh, I would like to invite Pastor Dabriel Buck. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, my name is Dabriel Buck. Uh, well, it's really hard to uh, find some attitude to start a D. <laughs> so uh, I'm diligent, uh, and then I'm currently serving the Milford United Message Church in Upper New York Annual Conference. And I'm going to invite uh, Junjun Moksani. Um, hi, my name is Julian Zhang. Um, I don't know what was is a description of my name or? Oh, was the, I'm sorry, I'm late, so I did I missed no, the it's, question. It's OK. Uh, just add a you know, positive adjective that begins with the same letter of your first name. Oh, okay, uh, first name. So just for now, joyful <laughs> will be mine. Um, I'm serving Bensonville First United Methodist Church um, and yeah, not only really conference. Um, I don't know who didn't go, um, so can you? Lydia Han. Okay, yeah, Lydia, I invite Lydia. Hello everyone, I'm lovely Lydia. I'm from Long Island East District, New York Annual Conference, serving Bellport United Methodist Church, beautiful beach uh, town. Nice to meet you. Hey, very good. I think that's everybody in the now, uh, except for Song Only. Can you please go? I'm smiling Songho Lee. I'm serving Central United Method Church in Stockton, California. Very good, thank you. I like your adjectives. So um, is this the second session or third? Is the second session? 
We started with a one week retreat in May. And yes. we had June, all month of June, four times. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, wow. Okay. Already we have spent more than a month together. So that's good to know. I imagine you all know each other pretty well then. Right. We so know I... how many spoons they have on the table. <laughs> so I'm a stranger here. Okay. Um, so I rely on uh, Reverend Song Won Lee for, you know, putting us in breakout groups. Um, and then uh, I imagine you will all, so uh, ex, I'm, uh, let's try to, you know, take a five minute break at, in the middle of the um, entire session. You know, I imagine we may eat the whole, so we've been going for a couple of hours, right? Uh, okay, so we, we will uh, try to take a you know five minute break at the top of the hour. So you know, three uh, three p.m. Uh, Eastern time, two p.m. and Central and one p.m. Uh, and so forth. So uh, now we are going to do an opening exercise. So we will do this three times really quick, quick, quick. So uh, Isola Moksanim will uh, put us in diets, you know, groups of twos. And then when you are with someone, then all you need to do is just to ask a question. What do you want? And then uh, let your partners say what, what he or she wants, and then, then let the other person ask the same question, what do you want, okay? So exchange the question, answer the question, and then when, uh, in, it should take about a few, I mean, 30 seconds or even less than a minute, then uh, we will shop, we shuffle, and then uh, go to different groups of two. So we'll do this three times. So let's let's do it, uh, Reverend Lee. Okay. So what you just did is coaching. What do you want? In coaching, that's one of the most fundamental questions that you ask when you coach someone. Uh, so let's hear from a couple or three people. You know, what was it like? Uh, for you when you did an exercise, ask a question and then when you answer the answer the question, what was it like for you? Uh, it was harder than I expected when first asked what did I want because I honestly didn't know what I wanted at the time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes. For myself, I think I thought it very complicated. Yeah. So right now, if someone right now if someone asked me, I would say I want to eat something, but <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> make it as a great answer. That's why I told someone Moksani, uh, spiritual energy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. One more for feedback. I um, I enjoyed my my conversation with Pastor Sangi because we both need a break or vacation, and like this is something that I couldn't share with my church people because I 
I need to, you know, show like, you know, enthusiasm and, you know, passion all the time. And I couldn't be completely honest to them, but Pastor Sang Sangi understands me and I understand him. So it was really, it was really nice for me to share. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so as we move on, you know, if you don't mind, it should be really helpful uh, if you uh, do not stop your video. It is important for us to all show uh, our uh, faces. Uh, it's because this is very interactive session, not just listening to the lecture. So I hope you don't mind uh, just, you know, staying on screen. All right. So uh, introduction uh, about the session a little bit. As I said, I'm a, a certified uh, leadership coach or life coach like uh, Reverend Song Lee. We are both uh, serving as coaches. And there is a need uh, everywhere you go. And uh, just the fact that coaching, uh, what is coaching? Coaching is part of this Madang uh, workshop series uh, is telling, uh, which means that uh, it is now being more and more uh, recognized as a great leadership tool. For me, coaching is a leadership tool uh, to use uh, when you lead a congregation or group or team uh, and or, uh, you know, there is a coach approach. So when you, uh, even though you do not coach somebody uh, individually or group wise or team wise, you know, when you have some, uh, you know, coaching perspective uh, with, with you, then it is a really helpful tool uh, for your leadership. So, uh, but then there is a confusion. You know, when you say I'm a coach, when I say I'm a coach, then not everybody understands what I mean by that. So, uh, but now, uh, uh, fortunately, there is a better understanding uh, in terms of what coaching is but still there is some confusion uh, and that people don't know what uh, is expected when I say I'm a, I work with a, uh, as a coach or I have a, my coach, like a, uh, I have a counselor. So, and then what qualifies a person to be a coach? Uh, I'm sure uh, Reverend Lee did too. You know, I went uh, to a graduate school like, um, to get certified and then uh, it takes continuing education, just, just like any uh, counselor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, consultant uh, or mentor uh, and so forth. So let me try to share the screen. Um, so there are a couple of three objectives for this course. First, uh, it is to introduce the field of coaching and its power for us to use in ministry. And then, uh, you know, I will uh, talk about some basic fundamental coaching skills, uh, such as listening. And then third, uh, as I said, this is an interactive uh, session. So we will practice some basic coaching skills that we, we learned today. So I'm going to uh, now uh, demonstrate coaching. And then um, Reverend Lee graciously agreed to be a coachee. So we know we use coachee, uh, C O A C H E E, and client interchangeably. So we will take seven to eight to ten minutes uh, 
to coach uh, Reverend Lee, usually, I mean, I, let, let me ask Reverend Lee, when you coach someone, how long do you take? I mean, an hour, 30 minutes? What is your usual practice? My usual practice, I coach 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. Yeah. Actually, for me, I do one whole hour, usually. So it depends on the person and practice. And then uh, you will see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes. Okay. So, Reverend Lee, mm -hmm. um, thank you. So, how are you today? Good. Okay, so good, to, so good to see you. So, what would you like to uh, have a coaching on? Yeah, I want to uh, talk about small group ministry. Ah, okay. What about it? Well, I'm uh, appointed to this church this year, July 1st, and I want to multiply and start some small groups here also, as I have done before in other churches. Ah, so this is your new appointment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, I understand, uh, you know, you are an expert, that's small group ministries are your expertise. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say, we forward three years from now. So 2025. Mm -hmm. okay. So you you would have stayed at this church for three years. So now you, you are looking back. Mm -hmm. So what have you accomplished in terms of small group ministry? Well, I started the small groups and multiplied and now i could say we have 10 small groups at least uh, wow okay so that is your goal 10 groups mm -hmm. in, okay uh, what kind of small groups are they the small groups are a group of people that share the words of God and they share their joys and concerns and pray for each other, support each other, and they find some mission project together and work on it together. That kind of a small group. We call that 4W, worship, word, work, and, and welcome. 4W. That's a nice, nice way to describe it. So these 10 groups are doing something similar or are they different types of small groups? Yeah, something similar. Uh, I call groups in as a small group when they have 4W. For example, uh, sometimes choir members come and say that, Pastor Lee, is our choir small group? And I ask, do you have a Bible, uh, words of God? Meditate on the words of God together? Yes, we start before we start the choir, we do that. And I said, do you welcome new members? Yeah, we do that all the time. And then do you uh, have a worship together? I mean, yeah, we praise together. We pray for each other. Then do you have work together? Um, not much. Then it is hard to say it a small group. However, if you have like benefit concert for the Ukraine victims hmm. and you work together for it, I can call it the small group. Oh, maybe then we will just work together to make it that happen. Mm -hmm. So they got the idea and then, then I can mm -hmm. call it, uh, uh, you acquire a small group. So whatever group you have, you have those four W component, then I will call it a small group. Ah, okay, very good, thank you. So uh, now you are still three years from now. Mm -hmm. You've uh, successfully launched and developed 10 small groups. So what did you have to do to get there, to get here? Uh, first, I had to preach on it and okay. explain what small group means uh, what those four W's are mm -hmm. 
in many different ways. So I mm -hmm. can do it in small groups. I can do it in uh, meetings or I can mm -hmm. have special sessions or I can preach on it and mm -hmm. use all the means that I can use and I can present it. Mm -hmm. So first I have to motivate people to do it. I'm motivated. And okay. then when they are motivated, I will make a sign up sheet so I can ah. have smuggle leader training. So ah, okay. when people sign up, I can have a leader training and then mm -hmm. when they have a lead, when I have leaders, I mm -hmm. can I can charge them to create a small groups, recruit a small group members and start doing it. Then mm -hmm. I can continually supervise and encourage mm -hmm. them to do it mm -hmm. for three years. In that way, they can multiply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sounds like you have pretty good, I mean, and clear. Mm -hmm outline and and the plans mm -hmm. um i wonder uh if there was any challenge or there were challenges uh, any difficult moments yeah uh i have done uh, small group ministry in many places and many other places uh, the challenge is almost similar the biggest challenge is to find the right leader Ah. people who have zeal for the small groups ah, okay. because they do if they are not motivated mm -hmm. if they don't see the need mm -hmm. for small groups okay. they they don't want to start it so the ah. first hurdle biggest challenge is to motivate people why do we need a small group so i hear two things so now let's go back trace back and then now you are at the present okay 2022 uh, i've i heard you're lifting up two things primarily as uh, challenges one uh, motivation two uh, leadership identify and train leadership so uh in order for you to develop and recruit and develop in 10 groups in three years. Uh, what is your first step that you want to take over the next two months? So next two months, uh, I am going to do the summer Bible challenge during oh, okay. summertime. Mm -hmm. During the summertime, I will ask people to read Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's a sum of Bible. All challenge. four of them? Okay. All four of them. So if you want to read the four Gospels during the summer, sign up. And uh -huh. then I will see how many people will sign up. And okay. then when they sign up, like, okay, it's not a big deal, just four Gospels I can read. And if I get like 15, 20 people, that's yes. okay. Good start. When I got 15, 20 people, I will group them like five, mm -hmm. three groups mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. let them share their insights every week. So one week you read Matthew 1 to 12, then what did you learn from that? And they share mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. In that way, I can make the like small groups mm -hmm. already starting there without telling them this is a yeah part of the big project. Mm -hmm. They think, that, oh, I'm just reading the guy, gospel. And I'm just sharing what I learned. But that's the like ice, tip of the iceberg that I have in my mind. So I just let them do the reading. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So All during right. the two months, I will do the Summer Bible Challenge. Summer Bible Challenge. OK, very good. You know, since uh, you, again, I hear you are having pretty clear mm -hmm. ideas and steps uh, before you. Um, so I really um, admire and respect uh, your plans and your expertise. But then now this is a new environment. So it, it, it is an unknown. Right. Okay, so uh, 
you know, doing uh, a project or program such as a summer Bible challenge, if you name, mm -hmm. if you name one, mm -hmm. just one homework that you can do for yourself mm -hmm. in carrying out this over the next two weeks, mm -hmm. what would it be? Next two weeks, my homework would be finding the right partner who is ah. willing to do that with me. Because ah, okay. I'm new. I don't know how people would respond or how people would sign up. So I, I am um, looking for a partner to okay. do this work together with okay. me. Yeah. yeah. So co-leader from your congregation. Right, right. Okay, all right. Do you have someone in mind yet or do you need to just uh, identify someone? I have someone in my mind. You have someone in your mind, okay. As SPIC, there is someone who is organizing welcoming groups for me. Ah, so okay. There are church All right. groups okay. that welcome me. So I said that, okay, I will go with the person to mm -hmm. each welcoming groups and ah. introduce myself and this idea of a small group. Ah, okay. Encourage them All to right. sign up for the Summer Bible Challenge. Then, uh, like, let me give you homework then. Mm -hmm. So this is that's your homework. Um, just find, uh, try to find the right moment, the right time to talk to this person mm -hmm. over the next two weeks mm -hmm. and invite the person to be your co-worker, mm -hmm. I mean, your partner. Mm -hmm. uh, in pursuing, uh, you know, small groups ultimately, but then, uh, you know, short-term summer bible challenge right does it make sense yes yes okay very good yes all right so uh thank you uh reverend lee uh and then uh you will be in my prayers thank you so uh, much uh for guiding me to clarify all the steps so i will uh, do my homework and talk to you later who how it went how it went. Very good. Thank you so much. So yes, uh, I will talk to you in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. All right. That this uh, is a coaching. This was a coaching demonstration that we did in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. What uh, What did you notice, please? I noticed that it's very uh, similar to. Uh, psychotherapy. <laughs> um, I'm, my background is uh, psychotherapy, counseling, and also I took some courses on coaching. So it reminds me of uh, what you do in Christian context is also very similar. You did uh, help him help Reverend to set goal setting, and then you have been asking open-ended question to help him to explore the options and reflecting and you your skill was like continuously reflecting uh what he was saying by paraphrasing so he you helped him to actually uh not just setting a goal but to 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 brainstorm the process of what he's going to do and I like the fact that you actually gave him an assignment. So when he comes to next meeting, he will be accountable <laughs> to bring the outcome of this coaching session. Very good. Wow. Thank you, uh, Reverend Han, Lydia Han. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. Very good. I mean, very good feedback. One more feedback. What did you notice? Well, first, um, thank you for the session because I'm trying to do small groups myself with our contemporary worship group. <laughs> so, <laughs> about the blueprint. <laughs> so thank you for that extra tip. But I also noticed how um, he set long-term goals and short-term goals, uh, just like uh, Reverend Lydia said. Um, and 
you, the last piece about the homework, you made him, you gave him assignments so that he will progress, whether he meets it or not, whether, uh, whether the plan is going to not work out or not. But in the end, by the time you meet him next time, he would have had made a progress. Yes, very good. Thank you. Yes, yeah. So, um, you know, you noticed that, I hope you noticed uh, that we can do a lot in 10 minutes. But then it is uh, also uh, thanks to the fact that Reverend Lee has pretty clear ideas. Uh, I want you to know that not every coaching session goes like this. Lots of times people are not clear or confused. So it takes a while to get to, you know, where people want to be. So then what is, so uh, what is coaching? So, you know, I mean, can I just say Te and Lydia? Okay, so Te and Lydia, uh, thank you for your excellent feedback. So what, let's look at the definitions. There are uh, many different definitions of coaching. You know, what is coaching? Then, hmm. So, you know, coach is someone who comes along beside you to help you grow toward your goals in life and ministry. So as Tay said, uh, you know, and also Lydia, there is a lot of goal setting involved in coaching, especially in leadership coaching. And then the second one is my just favorite like you know, just street elevator type of, uh, elevator speech type of uh, definition. Coaching is helping a person to move from where they are now to where they want to be. So there is a movement. In coaching, there is always a movement. And then another definition is the coach is transformational change agent who calls clients or coaches forth in their full lives. So now, uh, you, know, there, you know, since we spent a lot of time in warming us up, uh, I'm gonna skip uh, coach, what I mean, coaching is not, but coaching is not mentoring, coaching is not consulting, coaching is not training, coaching is not therapy. Uh, you know, psychotherapy, as Lydia said, there are lots of commonalities, but then again, coaching is not therapy, coaching is not counseling, coaching is not spiritual direction. Then why does Young Soo keep saying coaching is not this or that or this or that? Then what is coaching? You know, what distinguishes coaching from other helping professions? Uh, in coaching, authority or recognized expertise is with the coachee or client. The rest of the helping professions that I all named, the, who has the authority? The counselor, mentor, consultant, therapist, spiritual director. They are the ones who have the authority but in coaching, coachee is the one who has the authority and who's responsible for the outcomes. When you hire someone as a consultant, let's say, who is responsible for desired outcome? Consultant. We listen and then we hear what she, he or she has to say, do this, follow the steps. But in coaching, if I'm a client, I am responsible for my desired outcome. As you heard, as you saw, Reverend Lee is the one who's responsible for his desired outcome, not me. I process the conversation by asking questions, hold him by holding him accountable, 
by helping it, uh, you know, he has already clear set uh, goals, but, you know, setting goals. So uh, if you want to remember one thing from this session, uh, remember that in coaching, the authority resides with a coachee. Why? The principle of coaching is the coachee is naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. In other words, everybody already has resources and leadership and tools within himself or herself. I, as a coach, I'm not giving you tools. I'm not giving you answers. You, if you are my client, you already have resources and uh, responses and, and um, the ability to pursue uh, your goals and, and outcomes. So the, the principles of coaching is very different that way. So now let's do an exercise, uh, Wheel of Life. Uh, Reverend Lee uh, kindly sent this out to you uh, today. So I hope that you have that on your computer or this one. So the Wheel of, are you familiar with, who is familiar with the Wheel of Life? Yes, okay, thank you. So uh, the Wheel of Life is a tool to get a snapshot of how satisfied you are in your life. But hear me out. It, it is not about how well you are doing. It is about how satisfied you are in each segment of life. Money, I may have 10 million, $10 billion, but I'm not satisfied. Then um, here, this is zero, the center and the perimeter here is 10. Then my satisfaction level still could be one, even though I'm a billionaire. So please rate your level of satisfaction in each of the areas family and friends, spiritual, uh, I mean, significant other, partner, fun, recreation, health, money, personal growth, and then uh, physical environment. Physical environment is, it could be your house or it could be your office, it could be your church. So where you are physically and then career. It could be ministry, it could be something else, uh, a career for you. So, uh, so if uh, I am satisfied with my career at the level of nine, then I'll, I will draw the line like this. Um, oh, sorry, like this, nine. Mm -hmm. And then health, if I am satisfied the level of five, then I will draw like this. So if you have a piece of paper, uh, then just draw a circle, divide by eight. Uh, and then please um, rate each of the areas. We'll take a couple of minutes. I hope I was clear. Was it clear? Clear enough? Uh, Raise your hand, please, if you still need a, more time. Okay, very good. So um, we are going to go, go to um, diets, uh, you know, two persons breakout rooms again. And then I'd like for you to share your wheel of life. Uh, a focus is how bumpy would the ride be if this were your real wheel? Uh, or how balanced are you? Uh, or what area uh, would you like coaching on if you have a coach? Uh, 
uh, or what area would you be ready to uh, make a change in? So, um, all right, we will do two minutes per person. So if I say, for example, if Reverend Lee and I are partners, then uh, I will sh uh, share my life, my wheel of life for two minutes mm -hmm. and then turn it over to Reverend Lee and then he will do the same. Um, and then while you are sharing uh, your, your wheel of life, if you feel comfortable, you may ask some questions like I was when I coached Reverend Lee, okay? Mm -hmm. So we will take four minutes total. Uh, thank you, Reverend Lee. You have to join to your room. There is no invitation, Muxanya. No invitation? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay.
Okay, thank you. Uh, somehow, uh, in my group, there were four people, including myself. So, uh, one, uh, Kim Ju Sung Muksa Nim didn't get to share. But did everybody else get, get to share? Okay. Um, then, is it too rude uh, for me to ask Reverend Ju Sung Kim to share? This public in this public <laughs> in front of everybody, or does it make any difference? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, uh, the our group is talk about the the funny problems. I think it's uh, every pastor's family have the it's not uh, not enough to the to using the uh, their money because you know, the hour is ever as the salary is our pastor. So I also the same situation, but government looks like a family. I have three kids, and uh, so it's every day to mess up. <laughs> the, my kids is so active, so that is my uh, the feel of life. Uh, it's good, but very, it feels very tired too, and uh, I lose my power. So I try to figure out to my family, but uh, and uh. Um, and the other, the section is at almost eight to the nine, so it's I'm, uh, uh, totally the advice to my field of life. Yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you. Uh, any new discovery for you after we share this uh, feedback uh, quickly and then we will go on a break. So any new discovery about yourself, about your life? Like, wow, uh, I didn't know about myself this way. Okay, so any new discovery? Uh, nothing. <laughs> How about others? I don't have much fun <laughs> going on in my life. <laughs> you need more fun and recreation, in other words. Yeah. I didn't know how boring I was, though, until now. Oh, oh, you didn't know. Oh, so it's a, it's a new discovery for you. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah. So, uh, you know, coaching is about a new discovery about ourselves. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small or great. So, because, you know, for us to grow as a leader, self-awareness is always the first step. So unless I know myself about myself, I cannot grow uh, as a leader. And then I cannot really exercise good leadership. Uh, so, you know, this is a simple exercise. You know, if you Google it, uh, you know, there is, um, uh, you know, this is a wheel of life, but you know, wheel of work, you know, there are all kinds of wheels, okay? So, yeah. Let's take a five minute break and come back at 13, okay? Uh, these uh, skills are not just for coaching, but then they are helpful skills for whatever you do, you know, ministry or counseling um, and so forth. So I'm going to talk about uh, four or five skills. One, uh, being curious, curiosity. Number two, listening. And uh, number three, asking powerful questions. Number four, action, forwarding action toward goals. And number five, support and accountability. So we'll uh, go over these five basic skills. Uh, and then toward the end of the session, I like for you to have a coaching practice in tools, you know, diets again, um, five minutes each. Um, so 
And then five minute debriefing, I mean, I like to. So we need to leave 10, 15 minutes toward the end. Uh, so I, I, I will try to time it that way, okay. So being curious. Curiosity is the first, very first basic skill uh, in coaching. You know, if you are not curious, uh, you really cannot uh, work with your client or your coachee. Let's say when I uh, coached Song Won Lee, uh, if I showed this type of attitude, what do you think? So, so you know, what is your topic for today? And then he said, small group ministry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not curious. I don't want, I, it's not, you know, it's like I'm not in or interested in this person. So uh, coaching is not about gathering information. Uh, or gathering facts, it goes deep, deeper than this. So, you know, uh, actually coaching is a meaning, meaning business. So let me give you a, co a couple of examples on information gathering question. It goes like this. Let's say um, somebody said gain weight, so wanted to lose weight. Who was that? Somebody mentioned that today. Uh, but anyway, so just easy target, Reverend Lee. So Reverend Lee uh, said, I want to lose weight on information gathering question is, what things would you do to lose weight? A curious question is, what will weight loss give you? What does, what does weight loss mean to you? That kind of question takes the person right to the, a deeper place. Um, and then another information gathering question. When let's say uh, Reverend Lee wants to get some training in something and that's train, training in small groups, although he's the one who gives a training. But then I say, what training options are available for you? A curious question. What do you want to know that you don't know today? So curiosity is a frame uh, of mind of a child. You know, five-year-old on average engages in 98 creative tasks per day, 98. If uh, you are a 44-year-old person, you engage in two creative tasks. A five-year-old uh, average laps 113 times a day. 44-year-old person laps 11 times a day. And it goes on like that. So as we age, as we grow older, we lose creativity and curiosity. And the second one, second skill, listening. We are all trained to listen well. That's why we are all in ministry, right? We are trained to listen well. Coaching really depends upon, hinges upon listening. There are three listening uh, kinds of listening, level one, level two, level three. Level one is listening to your own thoughts, judgment and opinions about the client's story. And the level two, I mean, I'll, I'll go a little deeper than this. Level two is listening with a hard focus on the client. Level three is environmental global listening. So level one uh, is called internal listening. So attention is on, my, on myself, ourselves, my own inner voice. So let's say I'm, a co I'm the coach to, I mean, for uh, Reverend Lee and the Reverend Lee said, well, I said, what is your topic for the day? And it, oh, small group ministry. 
then my attention, I mean, my listening level is if it's a level one, then I, oh, that's not very good. What kind of minister is, is he? Who gets interested in small group ministry? So focus is me, not Reverend Lee. Uh, if I uh, do a level two listening, wow, small group ministry, that's great. Tell me more. And then uh, let's, level three is a global listening. So Reverend Lee is my client again. And then he shares, uh, I said, what do you want to talk about today? And then he says, uh, my struggle with um, operational who is dying. I mean, or, or I struggle with a very, I mean, a, you know, one of my best friends who he, he or she is dying. I want to talk about that. Then it's a global listening that, you know, I do coaching, I mean, 90% of my coaching on the phone, not like this, not Zoom. If I do global listening in the course of uh, the conversation, I listen to everything around about Reverend Lee. He may be, he may be, uh, he may have tears in his eyes while he was talking, but I don't see him, but I can feel it. So I may ask, are you in tears? I hear your tears. Or I say, I hear your heart aching. I feel your heart aching. So global listening is a listening at 360 degrees all around all. So my focus is on my client. You know, one of the fact, one of the things that I appreciate about coaching, I mean, like counseling is that if I, when I coach someone for an hour, I don't think of anything else. My focus is on the person. I have my own coach. What I appreciate about getting a coach is that this coach is focused on me. Who in the world listens to me for an hour? No one. With such uh, attention, and passion and care. And then my coach just focuses on, on Young Sook, no one else. So, you know, global listening is good, but then you don't, we don't have to do global listening all the time. You know, you use these different types of levels of listening uh, at different times, at different moments. But listening is very important. The third um, skill is powerful questions. You may have noticed that uh, I asked lots of what questions. I really don't ask why questions. Why question is a good one, you know, why questions are good, but then, uh, you know, sometimes necessary. But usually, why questions um, give you a nuance of blaming someone. Uh, say, uh, you know, Reverend Lee said, I am interested in developing or seeing 10 groups in three years. One powerful question could be, what? does this small group ministry mean to you? But if I ask a why question, why do you wanna do that? Why? So usually powerful questions start with what? What do you want? What, you know, someone said, someone uh, said, wow, I was taken aback. I don't, I didn't know what I want, what I wanted. We think we know, we think what, we think we know what we want, 
but we really don't. It takes a deep, you have to go to a deeper place in you. So what do you want? What's next? What does that cost you? What is, what is important about that? What is different about that? What will that give you? Uh, but in reality, you don't ask what questions all the time. You ask why question, how question, when question, or even yes or no question, you know, are you upset? That's a yes or no question, but so you ask all kinds of questions, but powerful questions are the ones that really do a trick in coaching. But in reality, uh, you know, I do a one hour session, I said, I'll be lucky if I get to ask one or two really powerful questions. The rest of the session, eh, you know, good questions. I may ask good questions, but I don't get to ask powerful questions all the time. If I say I do, it's a, it is a lie. So, uh, and then powerful questions come from authentic listening too. You know, in other words, you know, if you Google powerful questions, it will give you a list of all kinds of powerful questions. So in coaching, okay. So I'm uh, coaching uh, Reverend Lee and then, oh, this powerful question sounds good. So I just ask, even though it's not proper, what is next? That's not gonna work. The powerful, these questions are based on your listening. And the number four uh, skill is action. Forwarding action toward goals. I always say if there is no action, there is no coaching. Small, it doesn't have to be a big or huge action, small or great. Uh, Reverend Lee, someone Lee was going to, he is going to um, identify, he already identified, he's gonna to talk to this person that he has in mind uh, as his partner. That's an action that he's gonna take. So each coaching session, leaves the client, the coachee with homework. I always, I never leave coaching session without giving homework. But homework comes from, it doesn't come from me. It comes from the person based upon what he or she said so far. So in, act, in planning action steps, actions, uh, you know, SMART goals, it is one of the attachment attachments, uh, it is helpful, you know, measurable, smart, specific, measurable, audacious, realistic, timely. So when you uh, plan actions, oh, where do I start? But the smart goals give you some uh, options or some uh, directions. And then, uh, you may, some of you may feel, think that, oh, smart goals, that's kind of old, it's an old story, but it's still useful. And then there are other ways or other tools uh, that you can use in goal setting. Whatever tool or tools that you use, it is good if you make a good use of it. If you don't make good use of a tool, it's not gonna help. It may be a million dollar tool, right? so use good, uh, good use of that. The last skill is support and accountability. Uh, as a coach, I give constant support to my client, to my coachee. Uh, so and the support and accountability, they go hand in hand. And uh, just giving homework is accountability. And then I always write down the homework that the client gets. But at the next session, I start with the homework. How did it go? Where are you? 
Then some usually there's, oh, you know, it went well, I did this and this, or some other times they say, oh, I was so busy, I, you know, my life went to, went, uh, to a different direction, so I really didn't get to do that or I was ill, or my uh, father passed away, my mother passed away, my life was a uh, you know, mess. And, but still, you check in with the homework that you, um, you gave last, last time. I talked a lot. I talked about 30 minutes so, or 25 minutes. So I will stop here. Any questions, please? Before we go into um, coaching practice in in diets. Okay, very good, very good. So Isongo Muksanim will uh, put us in different breakout rooms, you know, tools. Uh, you know, usually it's most helpful to have threes in a uh, you know, group so that one person can observe and share. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if we have time for that. What do you think? Well, I can make uh, threes in one group also. Right. OK, so how many of us are we? One, two. Maybe we can have four groups. Four groups, OK, including you. OK. And then I'll be an observer too. So OK, let's do this since, I mean, So, Sungjin, right. you, Sungjin, you need help? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, we don't know what's the instruction, uh, the, the guideline or the questions that we have to share. You have to coach each other. One uh, person observe. So, one person coach one person and the third person observe. Okay. So, five minutes for each. Okay. Thank you. For each. And, okay. And this is a recording right now, so yes. Take a couple of minutes to uh, let's take a couple of minutes to debrief and then uh, wrap up our session today. How did it go? I mean, if you coached as a coach, uh, what did you notice as a coach?
what went well or what didn't go as well? I think I was uh, trying to um, uh, solution or like my advice, uh, although I, I shouldn't. <laughs> I see. Thank you. You know what? Um, you, Yeojin Kwak, oops, up some uh, You can, you can give some advice, but only with the permission. One thing that I didn't mention is uh, that if you want to share something, either advice or suggestion or what your experience, then always ask for permission. Like a, I say, oh, Reverend Lee, can you, you know, can I get a permission from you to share what I think? Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of the time people say yes. No one says no. So um, yes, so as, ask for permission. Thank you for sharing. What else? Uh, it was too short for us to finish the coaching. So we got up to gathering, reflecting and gathering resources. Yes, yes, I know five minutes was too short. Uh, so what you guys can do since you know each other really well, if you like, uh, set up partners or whoever was your partner in the last uh, session, last break of time, you can uh, email each other and say, hey, do you want to uh, set up a time and then we coach each other 20 minutes each or 30 minutes each. Actually, I suggest, I strongly suggest that. Uh, how many of you, I mean, so just uh, somebody who was my partner then and somebody who was a Reverend Lee's partner, you guys can, uh, Reverend Lee can help, uh, you know, get together and then coach each other. Is it, is it gonna work? Okay. Well, thank you so much. Now you are coaches. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have any questions, then uh, let me know. Um, my email is included in the email that Reverend Lee sent out today and yesterday. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, then feel free to email me. So thank you so much. Thank you. Ja. See you next Tuesday also. <laughs>